Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for SAT. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the SAT Official Study Guide 2020. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Make sure you buy the right edition 2020. We began this process yesterday as a matter of fact. Today is only our day two. Today is only our day two and yesterday we solved first 12 problems in the first section of the first exam that appears on page number 33, 333 rather. And today we are on page number 337. 337, make sure the book is in front of you. The book must always be in front of you. Solve the problems with me. Don't just sit there passively. Get involved actively. Uh, turn to page number 337, number 13. The very first one. If at the end of the video you find it helpful and you decide that you would like to work with me, that you would like to hire me as your tutor to get you help to get you ready for the exam, you can reach me at Keshwani Prep, that's P R E P, Keshwani Prep at iCloud.com. Send me an email and we'll see what we can do. Here's the first one. So we're given a function here. We are told that y is equal to f of x is equal to x squared plus 5x plus 4. As we can clearly see, it's a quadratic equation. It's a quadratic equation, hence it's a parabola. And what, what we're being asked here is to find the distance, distance between its x-intercepts. Distance between, distance between the x-intercepts. For example, a typical parabola, if you, if you have here, your parabola might look like this, and it cuts the y-axis at these two points, right here, those are your x-intercepts. X-intercept means, or rather, not y-axis, it cuts the x-axis at these two points. And the question now is, what's the dif what is the distance between these two points? And as, as we know, since this is, this is the x-axis, this is the x-axis here, y is equal to zero. In other words, in a very roundabout way, what, the, what, what, what I'm trying to tell you is that we have to find a solution to this equation. We're going to set it equal to zero and find out the solution to this equation. It's your choice. You can use the quadratic formula if that's what you prefer, or you can use factorization. I'm just going to factorize. So we have x squared plus 5x plus 4 is equal to 0. We're look, looking for two numbers such that they add up to 5 and their product is 4 and those two numbers are 4 and 1. x squared plus 4x plus x plus 4 will do nicely. In these two terms we have a common factor of x and in these two terms we have nothing common so we're just going to have a common factor of 1 and then we have x plus 4 equal to 0 and that gives us x plus 4 from here and then x left over from here 1 from here 0 hence x is equal to either negative 4 or x is equal to negative 1 that's all it is those are the two intercepts and it turns out that the way I drew the parabola here is not the right parabola here because both of its intercepts are negative so that's what it is but we don't have to redraw it as you can clearly see the distance is 3 but if you want to see it let's first draw a parabola And just put negative uh, the y axis here. So this is your negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, and negative 4. There you go. Negative 1, negative 2, negative, right here, negative 4, and 0. So the distance between between its x intercepts is 3. And that's all they are looking for here. Number 14. Number 14, it says, which of the following two values satisfy the equation that is given to us? And the two values are, Two values are one and nine. One and nine. It, and the equation that, it, that is given to us here is this. Now, before we di before we dive into this problem, I'm going to quickly explain to you why this one appears as 14. There are only what you have to understand here is that in this particular section, 
even though there are 20 questions but there are only 15 multiple choice questions since there are only 15 multiple choice questions the scale of difficulty for multiple choice question is first five first fives are easy six through ten are medium and 11 through 15 are supposed to be hard one in other words on a scale of 1 through 15 this thing appears as 14 why is it considered difficult it appears as a difficult question only for one reason I'm going to explain to you what that one reason is and why most people will get it wrong let's take a look at it here for example if somebody asks if, if somebody comes up to us and asks us what is how much is square root 4 the correct answer is the correct answer is square root 4 could be either positive 2 or negative 2 because if you square positive 2 or negative 2 you will end up with a 4 do you understand? Square roots only have a square when, when you have something in the square root, is uh, the answer is either the square root of 9 is either positive 3 or negative 3. Having said that, having said that this was a very straightforward question. This was a very straightforward question. But what if I but what if I were to come up to you and ask tell you that the square root of uh, the square root of uh, uh, the square root of 9 is equal to let's say p plus 2. Now how can you tell how can you tell what to do here because it could be positive 3 or negative 3 is p plus 2 equal to positive 3 or p plus 2 equal to negative 3 because obviously a p has a given value it has some value there for a given value of p it can only take it can only take it can only assume one it can only, this this quantity can only have one value so what do we do at this kind and the answer to that question is in that situation what we look for is what is known as principal rule Principal root simply means principal root simply means that this quantity can is only allowed to be positive to remove the ambiguity because otherwise you cannot really tell as I told you if you give p some value whatever value that you give the p p plus two has a unique value it cannot have two values so which one is it for example this thing is three here is is it five is three is it three plus five or is it negative three plus two is, it, is this quantity equal to 1 or is it equal to 5? Obviously it has a unique value. I, I already said it many times. And to remove that ambiguity, there is a convention, there is a, there is a, there, 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 there is a mathematical rule which says that in a situation like this, we look at what is known as principal rule. And that's what's going on here. That is what's going on here. Because if we, if we try it out, for example, if we try out 1, we put down 4 times 1, square root of it, and 4 times 1 is 4, and square root is either positive 2 or negative 2. And here we have 1 minus 1 minus is negative 2. So if if this quantity is negative 2, it would work. Negative 2 equals negative 2. But this quantity, the way it is presented to us in a situation like this, you're only allowed to have the principal root because it has to have a unique quantity. And x has to have a unique value. X has a certain unique one unique value. And if x is a unique value, it cannot always all of a sudden be one thing or the other thing. It has to be one thing, and that one thing is a positive root. So here, even though negative would work, it doesn't. It is not allowed because this is not a principal root. Pin, pin, C. Sometimes it is not, and better yet, it should not be. It is not a principal root, it should actually be, the correct English would be, it is not the principal root. The principal root is the positive root. Now let's try 9. If we try 9 in the same thing, if we try the 9 in the same thing here, we get square root of 4 times 9, which is 36, and again, 4 times 9 is 36, the square root of that is going to be positive 6 or negative 6, but the point is, on this side, we better have a positive quantity. x minus 3 is what we have. And if x is equal to 9, 9 minus 3 is indeed 6. And that is allowed. Because this, the only value it can take is positive 6. Because it has a variable with it. It's not a number itself. Do you understand? The square root of, the square root of 100 is positive 10 or negative 10. But if somebody comes up to you and know, what ask, ask you what's the square root of 100 times c or 100 times x, well, it can only have one value. And that value is the principal value. Whatever whatever the value of x is, you multiply it by 100, you get the idea. And it will have two roots, but you ignore the negative one because it has the this variable. And variable will, will have... Anyway, that's the reason. So the, so the bottom line here is that 1 does not work. When you put in 1, it does not work because we are not allowed to have negative root. But, six, uh, but 9 does work. 
So the answer to this question is 2 only. Answer to this question is 2 only. And there is answer choice. There is answer choice B. C is not the right answer. C is incorrect. Do you understand? And that was all. Before I erase everything, if you want some explanation in the book itself, I'm going to tell you where to go. Uh, look at uh, page number, page 408, and look at the explanation in the answer choices, where they give the answer to the problem. In it, they give you explanation, and they talk about the, the very fact here that we're looking for the principal root. That was number 14. No, that was a lot of fun. Number 15. Number 15 says that we have a system of equation. We have a system of equation with no solution. And it looks something like this. Minus x plus 2y Oh. There's no solution. The question is, if that's the case, if this system of equation we are told has no solution, then the question is, if that's the case, what, what would have to be the value of y? How much is y? Given the fact, given the fact that the system of equation has no solution, before we worry about how to go about finding the value of a, we have to first ask ourselves, what does it mean for system to have no solution? For example, if you have two lines, if you have two lines. And if they intersect, what that means is that whatever the equation of line L, L1 is and whatever the equation of line L2 is, because they intersect at that point, the coordinates of that point has to satisfy both L1 and L2. And that's called the solution. That's where they intersect. That's what it means. When you have two equations, you solve for the x and y, you find the coordinates of this point, that is the solution. Here we are dealing with a situation where the two equations have no solutions. They have no solutions because they are parallel lines. They are parallel lines. Their slopes are equal. Their slopes, their slopes are equal. They are parallel. These two lines are parallel. In other words, they have equal slope. And that's all we're going to do. All we have to do is Write this equation in slope intercept form. The slope intercept form is, looks like this y equals mx plus b. There is your slope. What the intercept is of these two equations, we are not interested in, any, in that at all. We just want to find out the slope from this equation. We want to find out the slope from this equation and equate each other. Make them equal to each other because they have equal slope. And when we make them equal to each other, we solve for a. Let's begin. Let's begin. I'm going to erase this part also so we have more, more room. So here's the first equation negative 3x plus y equals 6. And here's the other equation x plus 2y equals 4. So we're going to solve for y. That's all it is. That's it. y equals mx plus b. We're just, going to solve, we're just going to solve the equation for y. This one is very easy. y is equal to 6 minus 3x. 6 plus 3s rather, because when the negative 3x was there on this side, it becomes plus 3 s and we're going to write this in the form right here, which is 3x plus 6. There is your slope right here. The slope is positive 3. And now we solve for this one. This one is going to require a little bit more work, only because it's 2y, so we're going to have to solve for it. It takes a little, it takes one extra step, that's all. So 2y equals 4 minus x. You see, you bring the x to that side, and before we do any work, let's just put them in the right form. Minus x plus 4 equals 2y. And now divide the entire thing by 2. And we'll find that a, or rather y, is equal to a, negative a over 2, plus 4 over 2. But like I said, we're not interested in that at all. That's the intercept. We really don't care about that. What we care about is, what we care about is the fact that this quantity, negative a over 2, has to equal 3. And if that happens, this system will have no solution because the slope will be parallel because we forced it to be parallel by finding a unique value of a and if the slopes are equal the lines are parallel it will have no solution 
Let's find out what that is. Because that's what we're interested in. We want to find out what is the value of A. So, negative A over 2 has to equal 3. There you go. Multiply both sides by negative 2 and we're done. A equals negative 6. Multiply both sides by negative 2 as I said. And that's all. Negative and negative will become positive and 2 will get loud. I don't know why I'm explaining this baby stuff. A equals negative 6. And that is why it appears as number 15. And that is the reason why the previous one appeared at number 14. So we did the last three problems, 13, 14, and 15. Those were the hard problems in this section. There are still five more to go, which are grading questions. I'm not going to start them right now. We're going to make a separate video, video for those five grading questions tomorrow. Okay? Bye now. Again, as I said, if you wish to get hold of me, you can reach me by sending an email at kashwaniprep at icloud.com. Bye now.